Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. Today we're going to be talking about spring cleaning, but not in the way that you might think. We're going to try an Ayurvedic approach, which actually helps the body to cleanse through the approach of fasting and cleansing. And I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, the founder of Ayurveda Plus, Mr. Richard Haynes, and he also has a special guest, Ms. Jana Picardo. And I'd like to welcome both of them to the Beyond 50 radio program. How are you folks doing today? Doing well. Very good. Jana? I'm great. Thank you, Dan. Oh, very good. Now, let's talk about what, Ayurved- what the Ayurveda approach is to healing. Well, first, the, it's a very natural approach. It's um, based on the body's natural intelligence. And so it's a very holistic approach which allows the body to just get in touch with the wholeness, the health, really, that is its natural state. And during the changes of seasons, the body needs extra support in order to get ready and adapt for the next coming season. Now, tell us of the Ayurvedic approach to fasting and cleansing. Is it different from other modalities? Uh, Well, the main thing is that it's based upon each individual. So each individual has unique body type, uh, a unique state of balance, and depending on the time of the year and what's going on in your life, And Ayurveda takes all of that into account, the physical, the mental, the emotional state of the individual when prescribing a cleanse, uh, a seasonal cleanse, like which would be very appropriate for this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, Jana, I understand that you have experience with this. Tell us about that. Well, I recently did, um, a few of us with Richard's supervision, recently did a, an Ayurvedic cleansing, the kind of the, the shorter version um, or the introductory part of a full Panchakarma experience, which is um, the full regimen and program for, for cleansing. And this is just the portion where we do a special diet and take a, um, a daily... Uh, prescribed amount of of ghee, which is a special clarified butter that's used Mm -hmm. in India and in in Ayurvedic cleansing. And um, it was a really profound experience for me. It it was so much, it was more than just a physical experience and a physical purification process, but I had a very deep emotional experience that was attached to that as well. And... um, that's the beauty of this type of cleansing is that it's more than just clearing the systems of the body, but it's also working with clearing the emotional blockages and old residual traumas or things that are held in the cells. Those um, are removed as well in this process. Now that's very exciting. It's a lot different than just treating somebody with a pill for a symptom, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's very very different and and the the um, way that Ayurveda approaches everything is with the intention of creating more harmony and more love really for each individual. So it's a very gentle approach and yet pr- produces very profound results. Um, many times when someone does like a cleanse that they read about in a magazine or someone tells them about, it doesn't take into account the emotional state of that individual. And so the body actually can get traumatized by that and it can actually hold on tighter to those old emotional blocks where in Ayurveda, that is 
is addressed along with it and actually primarily addressed. Mm-hmm. And then when the then the body is willing to let go, it's willing to relax and let go of those blockages that have prevented us from experiencing a more happy, more happiness and more joy in our life. Now, is it possible, too, that we might have toxins in our body? I mean, the obvious ones are, you know, through the food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and what's around us, but that we could actually get toxicity from emotional or pent-up emotions or traumas? Oh, for sure. In fact, um, from my experience, we pollute the body more just with our thoughts and with the chemicals and the and the uh, adrenaline and all that that's created by those thoughts than actually we get from the environment. But the body has an amazing ability to be resilient and to adapt to any stress. And the 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 particular time that's most indicated for a removal of these toxins is at the change of the seasons, where right now we are going from cold and dry winter here in Portland Mm -hmm. to it's warming up a little and the air is getting more moist. And this is the time that you'll see a lot of people uh, getting colds and and at the change of the seasons, getting some illness. So Ayurveda addresses that. It's to avert the danger that has not yet come and um, get us ready to go into the next season without having to suffer any illnesses. Mm. Now, Jana, what was one of the reasons you decided to approach this way of of healing? Well, I've tried many different approaches, and um, many of those have been successful. But the one thing that I I admire so deeply, and it's what prompted my interest in Ayurveda, is that it is so holistic in its nature. And I really firmly believe that traumas um, from our past and You know, when you talked about food, when you asked about food a moment ago, everything that we take in are not just what we eat and what we put in our mouth, but our environment, the people around us, uh, our work environment, those that are are close in and our family and friends, the TV, media, anything that we take in is food. So Ayurveda really honors that. It honors that all of our external sensory input all of those things are affecting our body and our body is always responding to that that those external changes and like richard was saying is the changes in the seasons our body is always adapting to that so i believe that ayurveda is um, one of the the systems and i think it does it so beautifully that approaches this in such a holistic way this idea of cleansing but deeper than that what it offers that I would say other systems of, of healing or cleansing don't offer so much is this quality of gentleness and love. And um, if you look very deeply into the types of therapies and even this process that uh, we recently did with Richard, um, ingesting this ghee, this clarified butter, everything is used in Ayurveda is, is around oil. So much of the therapy is around oil. And the word for oil and Ayurveda is actually um, comes from the word sneha, and the oil treatments are snehana. But sneha means um, it, it's equivalent in Sanskrit is love or affection. And so the way that it approaches this type of cleansing is through this gentle, deep love, this gentle encouragement for the body to let go, this gentle encouragement for the, the person's being to completely relax and surrender and release and instead of, like Richard said, in some of these other cleanses that are rigid, the body is actually holding tighter to those things that it doesn't want to let go of. It's afraid mm-hmm. to release those. Because sometimes in the healing process, to, 
to to actually move through the healing uh, or the clearing of toxins that have accumulated in the body or past traumas, whatever it might be, the individual has to actually move back through that process. And that can be very challenging. It can be frightening. It can be scary. And so this is the type of system where it's not just going to cleanse the body, but it, it may actually bring up some difficult things that people have to face and have to look at in order to clear them. But this system of Ayurveda in itself holds a space for that in a place of love and gentleness and compassion. And that's, that's in everything that's prescribed, in not just the modalities, but also the substances that are ingested and the types of foods that are recommended. So it's very special and very unique in its approach, and that's why I uh, chose to do this type of program. Now, were there any surprises for you when you began this process, like, well, I didn't expect this to happen or to experience that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I actually didn't expect it to be so intense. And mm -hmm. um, I'm smiling now as I'm thinking about my experience because I've done so many different types of cleaning and clearing and working at the cellular level to detox you know, toxicity, emotions, whatever that might be. And I thought, oh, I've done so much of this, this will be a breeze, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was in the beginning. It was very gentle. It was really lovely. But this, um, the, the last part of what we do is actually a, a cleansing, a, pur a purgation of all of those toxins. And that experience for me was was much more intense than I ever imagined. It was one of the most intense experiences in that type of, in a, in a detoxification process that I had experienced, but it was profound. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that I couldn't handle, but it, it was intense enough to help me to see the connection to what it was I was actually purging or what was actually being extracted from my body, it was, in a way, it kind of woke me up. It shocked me into seeing, ah, that's, what, that's what's leaving my body. That's what's leaving my being. That's what I'm getting rid of. And it really demonstrated to me the, the power of this type of detoxification program. Now, before I ask Richard this uh, next question, I wanted to ask you, Jana, as you felt clean or detoxified, uh, what were the benefits that you noticed that were much different besides just probably having better energy? I felt very light mm -hmm. physically and energetically. Um, it's not a weight loss regimen, so it, I don't mean light in, in terms of right. losing weight. Felt, I just felt clear. And people even commented. They said, oh, you're, you're glowing. Your skin is glowing, of course, because I have all the nourishment and moisture, but... You know, even from a, an energetic perspective, you know, the, the person's energy field, they're, they're, they're shining. They're all cleaned and polished. And, and so it's, it, from the individual perspective, in my experience, um, I felt that. I really felt so clear and peaceful and tranquil and calm. And that's also, I, I really believe, one of the benefits in Ayurveda. There's nothing that's being forced or pushing. It's all about moving through things in a very calm, harmonious way, in a very sattvic, sattvic manner, as, as we'd say in, in Ayurveda, in the Vedic words, um, in a way that's balanced and peaceful and harmonious. Now, Richard, my question to you is, because as I understand, Ayurveda is actually from India. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. How would you say it would be different if somebody decided to go there versus doing Ayurveda here in, in the West, if, in that's fact, there is a difference? Yeah, that's such an interesting question. And, um, you know, I've been uh, ex experiencing, studying, and practicing Ayurveda for, for over 20 years. And what I've found over the years is that Actually, in India, there's two things that are very different in India. One is the culture is completely different than ours, which impacts the nervous system completely different than our nervous systems are impacted. And so Ayurveda has built up in India around how the treatments would best support people from India. 
mm-hmm. which is very different than what would best support people from the Western world. So that's one thing. The other thing is that in India, due to the occupation of the British and the influence of the West, many of the ancient uh, practices, especially the more subtle forms of Ayurveda, the more profound forms, were actually lost and destroyed. Colleges were destroyed. Libraries were destroyed. As the uh, British attempted to uh, implement their lifestyle, their culture, and Western medicine. Mm -hmm. And so what Ayurveda did survive has a more allopathic uh, approach. It's kind of a combination between Western medicine and Ayurveda. Where the Ayurveda that has grown up in the West has come from people really sincere and devoted and intending to revive Ayurveda in its most pure form. Mm -hmm. And in its most pure form, it isn't Indian. It isn't even Eastern. It's equally applicable to life in every part of the world. But it's different in every part of the world. Mm -hmm. So... um, the the one thing that Westerners need more than people from India is this gentle approach, which Ayurveda really uh, knows how to how to, how to uh, give. In fact, many times Ayurveda is called the science of love because it's love that really allows the healing to take place, and um, it's. So, and Gianna had the experience of doing um, a cleanse in India and then doing this one with me, and uh, so maybe she's got something to say about that. Yes, it's it's interesting. Richard and I were just talking about this the other day. So, um, when I was starting my journey into Ayurveda, I had um, had gone to India in 2006, and I was going to study a, a, a yoga therapy and Ayurveda program because there the two were combined. So I hadn't actually started the bulk of my studies yet. I didn't really know what to expect. And, and the first thing I did when I arrived is I spent 10 days at a, an Ayurvedic hospital, which is borderline a resort. You know, it's, it's almost hard to tell the difference. But, a, a, you know, a Panchakarma and Rejuvenation Center. And they did the all the protocols and the diagnosis, and they decided that the state that I was in, at that time I was working in the in the corporate world. I had actually left a career, but I was still very much in um, a business world type job and setting. And they really could see that my body and my mind especially were under a lot of stress. And so instead of putting me through a complete detoxification program, I went through a rejuvenation program, which is, you know, very gentle, a gentle way of helping the body to release and, and restore. And so most of my treatment was daily. It was recommended that I receive these luxury, luxurious uh, oil massages with two practitioners massaging my body and and the traditional um, Ayurvedic, it's called Abhyanga. Every day, I, or not every day, but every other day, I received um, what's called Shiradhara, this beautiful treatment where the oil is poured over the third eye spot of the forehead and it covers the scalp. It's very grounding and calming. Everything that I was doing was so luxurious. And what came up for me was here I had come to this center with the intent to detoxify and to clean my body and and also to learn. And I felt like I was being given all this beautiful food and treatment and attention. And what came up for me, actually, and I just recently realized this, I felt like I didn't deserve that. I was so used to being in a world where 
I had to work hard and be productive. And so to take this time, here I was coming for education for two months in India, and to take this time where I really thought I should be achieving something, I should be clearing, I should be learning, and and to ha- kind of be forced to just relax and to do yoga and to eat well and meditate and to receive all these treatments, what came up for me was that it, it I didn't deserve it. And so when I was sharing that with Richard, what he so accurately perceived was, well, isn't that interesting that they were able to see that my body needed gentle care and gentle rejuvenation, but they weren't able to perceive that because of the state of my mind or my cultural conditioning that I wasn't actually able to receive it and that that may have stopped or somehow lessened the depth of my process. Uh, Richard, if you had... um, any other thoughts on that? It was really perceptive what you said to me when I shared that with you the other day. Yes, and that, that's what I'm talking about, the cultural differences. I mean, Gianna's experience of, of, of saying, oh, I don't deserve that. My, uh, my experience from working with many, many, many people is that that's what we believe. We believe that we are kind of this, fierce, independent, and we have no needs, and we don't need love, and we're independent. And that that overlay of that mental uh, energetic field actually must be softened before the, the body can really take in nourishment. And so in the in my practice, when somebody comes to me and wants to do panchakarma, I I always say, well, let's uh, let's do some preliminary work so that you can actually get the maximum benefit out of it, because it's a completely different mindset that we have to adopt in order to actually, like Gianna says, to take in this very very profound experience of nurturing love. Mm -hmm. It's really quite interesting as I listen to you two, uh, the paradox that comes up. On the one hand, Richard, you say that there is a particular social conditioning, especially in America, that you're fiercely independent, you do for yourself, uh, that sort of thing. But yet the paradox comes in all the messages that we receive that counter that. You're not good enough, (laughs) for one thing. You don't measure up compared to this guy. And I mean, the messages are out there that create probably a lot of confusion for people sometimes about who they really are. Yeah, well, just that message that you're not good enough actually uh, strengthens the message. Oh, I've got to be strong. I've got to buck up and just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't want to really admit that deeper feeling of, oh, I'm not good enough. So we just we just hold ourselves very very tight in this in this culture. It seems to me. Now here's a question I find interesting because Gianna, you brought it up uh, about the healing process or the cleansing process. Why oils? What's the significance of using oils, and how are they used? Well, uh, yeah, let let me answer that. Um, So in, in our nervous system, we hold these traumas and these toxins in actually in our nerve tissue. And Ayurveda says that these toxins in in Vedic literature, they're called samskaras, or the remnants of past trauma, are actually held in our nerve tissue, which is fatty tissue. And so if we're going to, like, purify that fatty tissue, then we've got to somehow dissolve those toxins that are held in that fatty tissue. So the protocol that's been ingeniously implemented over thousands of years is to ingest a quantity of ghee, of herbalized ghee, or ghee with herbs, 
that actually will go into the nerve tissue and begin to loosen and relax the the nerve tissue so that these blockages can be released because the body naturally wants to release them. It's just that it's holding on. And so the first step is to loosen those toxins, the, the emotional samskaras. And that requires oil. And so we use both internal oiliation with the ghee and external oiliation with uh, uh, sesame oil or sunflower oil or almond oil and infused with herbs uh, to on the skin to help loosen and then allow these toxins to then move into the digestive system and where they can be eliminated from the body. Sounds like such a fascinating process. How can people find out more about this? Uh, and uh, what types of, uh, I guess, practitioners, what would be the questions they would want to ask to be sure that, I guess, they're getting the right kind of care? Well, okay, the, the first question is, uh, I've got quite a bit of information on my website. Some of the, uh, there's some articles links to articles that were written in Yoga Journal and some of my own articles about Ayurveda. So that's one. And then, of course, with the Internet now, just do a search with uh, Ayurveda or Panchakarma and you'll get tons and tons of information. The second question, you know, is how to find a, a practitioner. Um, that's you know, I think you can find really wonderful healing practitioners in every modality, whether it's uh, Western medicine or Ayurveda or naturopathy or chiropractic. And you can also find people that aren't so good in all of those different fields. So what I suggest always is to interview your prospective healthcare provider, and really tune in to your own intuition, to your own heart, and see, does this person seem like the right fit for me? Because everybody is a little different, and everybody's going to respond a little differently to, um, to treatment. Now, what was that re- website again, Richard? It's AryavedaPlus.com. That's A Y U R V E V A. And the word plus, P L U S, dot com. That was really fascinating to bring both of you on the program today. Again, it's always uh, unique when you can find what you would almost call, in some ways, non invasive treatments for being able to improve someone's health. And I want to thank both of you for being on the program today. Thank you, Dan. Also, encourage you, the listeners, uh, visit AravedaPlus.com to find out more about this. And again, I want to thank our guests, Richard Haynes and Jana Picardo, for joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio program. Be sure to visit us at our website, which is Beyond50Radio.com. That's the number 50. Sign up for our free weekly e newsletter as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program, and remember, live your day past halfway.